Didn't see you there. Yo, what's going on, my friends? Welcome back to Fiddle Therapy with me, your host, Jan. I do hope you are all doing well today, my sweet friends. I really do hope that. Namaste. Welcome on in. Today is an interesting video, a hybrid, if you will, a part Chelsea news, a big story that I wanted to report on. And I'm going to preview the London Derby, which is a massive game, of course. I won't be able to watch the press conference first due to timing but we move. If you enjoy my content and you want to show some support, please do drop a like, subscribe to this channel if you're new and you want daily content and Chelsea news. Bell notifications icon must be pressed, I'm afraid, as we get into today's story. And that is Big Romelu Lukaku. That's right, Big Rom potentially returning to the Chell Stamford Bridge, a club that still has a place in Lukaku's heart. Chelsea massively want a striker this summer and they're seeking elite options, of course. Romelu Lukaku is a proven goal scorer in the Premier League and is elite and in his prime. I'm gonna go into that in just a bit. First of all, we know Chelsea want a striker. Olivier Giroud will not get a contract extension. Tammy Abraham is likely to exit Chelsea, which is incredible when you think about it. But Chelsea are entertaining offers of around 40 million pounds for the striker this summer, who will have two years left on his deal. Is young, English, proven he can score goals in the Prem and is an international. All those attributes make you a valuable asset for a club and many clubs will be in for him. You can imagine the likes of uh, West Ham, of course, that need a striker big time. He'll be heavily linked there. And even the likes of Leicester are really interested in Tammy Abraham. Of course, at the moment, they're playing Ian Acho and Vardy, but Vardy's mid-30s and they need a long-term replacement. And if they want to keep playing two strikers, I like the sound of Tammy Abraham and Ian Acho, two young, talented strikers of Nigerian descent. It's a nice story. As much as I feel uncomfortable with the idea of Tammy Abraham being sold, especially where players outlast managers in this Chelsea setup, you know, let's hope Tuchel can stay for a while and really build some success, and therefore you have to give him who he wants, and you can't necessarily have passengers, and that's not me disrespecting Tammy Abraham, that's me seeing how perhaps he's just not a favoured player of the current manager. And this is football, people, this is what you have to accept. So, what does that leave you? Well, at the moment, we Timo Werner plays on the wide flank, and if we are looking for a proper number nine down the centre, not a false nine, of course, you look to Erling Bro Haaland. And Chelsea wanted to buy Haaland for a long, long time, and still do. They tried to get him off Salzburg before he went to Dortmund, though they were not happy with his wage demands. I bet Chelsea regret not making that decision. But certain reports are suggesting that Chelsea are admitting defeat in trying to buy Erling Haaland this summer, maybe financial issues, which is a shame because he's 20 years old and he's just got the most scintillating goal scoring record in Europe in terms of who he's playing for, how many goals, he's, you know, what's he got, like, incredible amounts of goals in the Champions League, more goals than starts, just absolutely is devouring the Bundesliga, you know when you buy in, like, a foreign striker, you take a risk, you know, Morata, Pato, Falcao, like, recent strikers, even Timo Werner, who seemingly is more of a wide sort of functioning attacking player now, you know. I'd actually urge a lot of you to go and read Liam Twomey's article on Timo Werner on The Athletic. It's quite interesting. It talks about how his attributes are important, even though he's not scoring. I can kind of understand that. But Chelsea don't have a number nine to change how they play at the moment. You could Giroud and Tammy are both number nines and they're both good, but it's not worth playing a number nine system, changing how Chelsea build up their attacks to Tammy Abraham or Giroud at the moment. But you definitely change how you play for Erling Braut Holland because he is not only going to threaten to maybe score goals, he's gonna go out there and, you know, eat your children. <laughs> So you know you gotta get you gotta get some effects from him. It's like Diego Costa vibes. He's out there to take names. He's out for blood. Anyway, everyone's Harlan. Chelsea are maybe admitting defeat or coming around to the notion of not being able to buy him, and they're looking to alternatives. And of course, Romelu Lukaku is the big name on everyone's lips at the moment. Matt Law jovially spoke about this on the London is Blue podcast. How Chelsea should look at Lukaku. A few weeks later, he comes up as a linked player, and Chelsea are 
reportedly looking at Romelu Lukaku to return because let's face it right he wasn't given enough of a chance under <laughs> under Jose Mourinho where have we heard that one before goes away West Brom Everton United consistently scores goals in the Premier League at whatever level he is and then obviously he's Belgium's top scorer he's been incredible for Belgium plays off the wing sometimes he's like really versatile for them and of course he's gone to Inter to play under Conte and they love each other manager and player and they're gonna win their first uh, City A Scudetto in like 10 years and they're absolutely walking the league and he, I think he's top goal scorer or something he scored loads of goals this season he's good man he's 28 years old I think in his prime you know you can imagine he's got three years of top 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 goal scoring left in him and he does like Chelsea still he even tweeted out nothing but love when someone asked how do you feel about Chelsea at the moment nothing but love he thanks Chelsea for giving them the chance and I think there is a part of him that wants to return home certain reports suggest Chelsea are willing to pay 90 million pounds which is a lot of money for Lukaku <laughs> yes he's proven elite and all that kind of stuff but he's still not like he's not Lewandowski do you know what I mean and he's not Harry Kane is he I mean like uh, he's probably close but he's not and with Haaland you're getting a player seven or eight years younger who you know looks like he'll be a good long you know you'll be able to sell him for a lot as well like he's a an asset that will see a return am I surprised Lukaku's gonna be that much money no in fact reports today are suggesting that Inter Milan won 105 million pounds that's a lot of money man <laughs> Doesn't surprise me though, because when you think about it, right? What did Inter pay for him? 75, uh, 80 million pounds to Man United, and what? And since he's been incredible, and they've won the league with him, so his value has to have gone up. So it doesn't surprise me. And there's massive risks. If Chelsea could buy Lukaku for like 70 million pounds, because Inter need the money, because they're in financial trouble, and they actually made like a five million loss on him just because they needed to sell the asset, then that would be great. You know, Lukaku, 70 million, superb not our record signing just do you know what i mean i'd be very happy with that but 105 million is too much for me as things stand and yes he's not the most perfect technical player you can see him do wonderful bits of technical play sometimes but often his touch can desert him i know it's a bit of a meme but it happens do you know what i mean it's like a real thing yes ultimately his goal return is paramount and especially in this Chelsea team that's what you need he would ultimately make Chelsea a lot lot better but I'm just for that amount of money like for a player that used to be yours it's like Pogba going back to United do you know what I mean for 80 or 90 million the card that was that's mental that Pogba cost 90 million in like five six years ago insane still the record for a British club buying a player I think Pogba and then it's Harry Maguire afterwards so it's United spending all the peas anyway let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below on Romelu Lukaku potentially coming back to Chelsea would you take him and what's your financial limit your spend before it's like no too much mine probably is 80 million Probably. Let me know yours. Anyway, let's move on to the second part of the video and talk about Fulham. Chelsea are neck and neck with Real Madrid in a semi-final Champions League tie, which you may think would be the priority game here, but possibly not. Maybe the Champions League is a bit of a free hit and Fulham is the bigger game to absolutely secure top four. But then again, Chelsea are two games away from guaranteeing top four, or Champions League rather, in the actual Champions League. So they're both massive. Fulham are desperate trying to get relegation and they still got a tiny little bit of hope that they can do so i quite like for them they're like chelsea's little brother they're quite a nice club um even though they did give chelsea some stick their fans which i thought their fans were nice i didn't see that coming anyway i digress this is the lineup they sent out last time in the premier league against arsenal where they drew one all or really they should have won that game one nil with a josh magic goal but i believe they conceded the equalizer really late maybe even stoppage time which they've done loads this season it's a 4-4-2 with no Ruben Loftus-Cheek. I think he featured from the bench, but of course he wouldn't be able to play against Chelsea. He wouldn't be eligible as his out player. But they got loads of decent players for them. Good, functional players. They're probably a little bit good to go down. Well, you know, no one's too good to go down, obviously, but they've got a good side and Scotty Parker's done a relatively good job. I think if they just, you know, obviously they just score a few more goals, they stay up, but it's a bit of a shame, really. Fortunately, they can't score goals and that will bode well for Chelsea and our immaculate defence 
defensive record, let's have a look at my predicted lineup and see who I've chosen to play them. Right, it's important to note, of course, I have not watched the pre-match press conference, but to my knowledge, it's only Kovacic that is actually injured. Uh, so here's my lineup. I've gone for Mendy slash Kepa in goal because we're playing so many games and he does put Kepa in every now and again for like relatively big cup games at like the semi-final or, you know, the old Premier League game. And it is, you know, relegation fodder Fulham in the middle of a Champions League time. So I put Kepa or Mendy. I wouldn't be surprised to see either start, to be honest. In the back three, I imagine Thiago Silva will be rested and brought back in for the second leg against Real Madrid. So Christensen moves to the middle. I think Azpilicueta goes to his sort of more favoured right centre-back role, where he can cover the right wing-back if they're more attacking. And I've actually put Zuma in at left centre-back. I think Zuma's been decent enough, and I think Rudiger might need a rest, but I wouldn't be surprised if Rudiger just keeps on starting. Right, so I've changed the wing-back here. I've put Hudson the Doy at right wing back because I think Fulham will defend deep and we need offensive wing backs and with Cesar Pilaqueta at right centre back he offers that additional cover for the right wing back who in this instance I've made Callum Hudson the Doy and similarly I'm going to give Marcus Alonso another run out in this game to try and break down this defensive Fulham block and also be good in the box. I can imagine seeing him there resting Chilwell and bringing Chilwell back in for the Champions League return leg against Real Madrid. The only thing is, I can't see any rotation in the midfield. Kovacic is injured, of course. Um, I think he's still injured for this game. Maybe he'll return for Madrid. And as good as Billy Gilmore is, we all know that Tuchel will not just randomly trust him in a big game. So there's been enough, just enough days rest. I can see him starting Jorginho and Kante again and just really relying on them to see out the season and maybe looking to buy a midfielder in the summer. Chelsea don't score that many goals, so two players we must absolutely start is Mason Mount, obviously our player of the season. He's just gone to EA Sports uh, Team of the Season 92 rated FIFA card. Incredible. Uh, Pulisic, the man on form, has to start as well. We need goals. I'm actually going to drop Timo Werner for this game, although we wouldn't be surprised at this point if he starts again just to try and get him a goal and really kickstart his season like I say season is the end of the season kickstart some new form and Hakim Ziyech who Thomas Tuchel is always saying oh he's very close to starting he's been playing very well Start him against Fulham. Start him against this game. You know, he can combine with Hudson Odoi on the right flank. And this should be a really potent attacking lineup that should hopefully put Fulham to the sword, although we rarely put teams to the sword. Score a couple of goals at least and then make some subs. You know what I mean? Right, that's my lineup. Let's talk about this game a little bit more and change screens. Massive game. Chelsea need to beat Fulham. Um, and you don't want to lose this game drop out the top four to West Ham or go level on points or whatever uh, and then be worried and then the pressure goes on even more in the Real Madrid game and then it gets into the players' heads. Do you know what I mean? So this is a huge game. A must win, of course. I think Chelsea will win this game and I'm going to predict a win. I'm going to say a 2-0. I think we'll continue our immaculate defensive record purely because also they don't really score goals for them. Sod's law. I've commentators cursed it now, I'm sure. But I think we'll score a couple because I think Tuchel's going to put a lot of attacking players out. And I think we'll keep a clean sheet. So 2-0 from me. Let me know your score predictions down below. And if you change anything in the lineup, um, I'll be keen to read your comments. Uh, drop a like if you've enjoyed my content today, my friends. Uh, subscribe if you are new. Enjoy the football. And I will see you later. You ain't so tough with that bad boy tuck. I'ma get it how I'm living. I'ma walk the walk. Outline my lines, I rap through thought Body bag the verse, outline the chalk In my life seen trouble, hustle on the double Silence on the trigger like my pick got a muzzle Yo chick like to guzzle, bad boy stay in trouble I only love this paper, sorry I don't I love me baby